Consumable Fitness. Welcome to today's workout at home, which is called Under Fire. Today we've got two different parts to our workout. We have a strength and skill component that's going to take roughly about eight minutes. We're going to be doing step ups to some kind of chair or whatever you may have at home. Now if you don't have anything to step up onto, you can also do this too with just lunges. So we are going to be holding one kettlebell or one dumbbell, either in the front rack or overhead if you have the capability to. If you have a kettlebell, holding it in the front rack here, making a little pocket, a little V-shape with your arm and elbow, having that kettlebell rested high. You want to keep that elbow high, uh, just as high as your hand. You don't want it to droop or having it overhead. So we're going to be holding that dumbbell or kettlebell in that front rack or overhead position as we go over the step up and I'll kind of review that here in just a moment. Then uh, we'll take a couple of minutes to just kind of settle, take a break, grab a drink of water. And then we're going to do a really nice quick workout. This is not going to take very long. We're looking at about roughly like four to seven minutes. Really quick workout, 30, 20, 10 reps. Um, your choice of either pistols. So if you have one-legged squats, you can do pistols. You may also have to do jumping lunges, 15 per side for a total of 30. And then you've got a movement today called line hops and plank. So it's going to take the place of our class workout today where we're doing box jump overs, holding onto the box. We're going to actually be on the floor in a plank position and we're going to be jumping our feet side to side. Uh, so let's really quick talk about the step up portion and then we're going to go ahead and set the timer and do that uh, portion of the workout. So uh, you have a chair or box or something to step onto, it doesn't have to be very high. And um, with our step up, uh, we're going to do uh, each leg eight times in a row before we switch to the other leg. So just with our own body weights, um, obviously the higher the box is, the um, more that your knee gets above your hip crease or vice versa, the heavier it's going to be. But what we're aiming to do is hopefully step up and try to get that leg extended before the other leg gets to the box. Now, if you can do that, you're going to get much more benefit out of the work from this leg. A lot of times what I see people do is they'll step up onto the box and then they'll kind of stay in a squatted position. They'll bring the other leg up and then stand, which you can do too. You're going to just get a lot more benefit. If you can really try to walk out and extend this, uh, this hip and this knee before you get the other foot on the box. Now with the step ups, you can keep the top foot on the box. You do not have to bring it back down each time. Okay, so you can keep that leg on the box for all eight reps. And then you can switch, keeping the top leg on the box all eight reps. So you don't have to worry about stepping down each time. Now if you have your dumbbell or a kettlebell, front rack will probably be a little bit easier for you holding it one side. You're gonna step up with the leg opposite of what you're holding uh, the dumbbell or the weight lift. So if I'm holding this, this is my left side, you're gonna step up with your right leg opposite. And so that way you're keeping your balance. If you try to step up with the same leg, you're gonna feel a little bit one-sided or the weight's gonna feel a little bit uneven. So this ensures that you're keeping that square, that evenness as you're stepping up. And if you're doing the overhead, you're holding that dumbbell with the bicep right next to the ear. So try not to keep it in front of you. Just try to keep that upper back engaged as you're holding that dumbbell overhead. Trying to keep this arm, the elbow, locked out. So if you notice that your elbow starts to bend over time, you might be better off just trying it in the front rack position. So holding it overhead, this takes a little bit more stability and balance. And then you can keep that top leg on the box. So whenever you're ready, we're gonna go ahead and start our uh, eight minutes, so it's every two minutes. So we're gonna have a little bit of built-in rest. You're gonna get eight steps per leg, and then we're gonna rest for the remainder of that two-minute session. Uh, and then we're gonna do that four times, eight, 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 and eight, uh, for a total of eight minutes. We'll go ahead and start our timer. Going in 10 seconds. Make sure you keep that core raised. Three, are you going overhead? I'm going to do overhead once. And if 
you forget to keep your foot on the box, that's totally fine. You're gonna get the same benefit. We're really working the top leg with the step up. are more for quality, not for speed. You're gonna have plenty of time to rest, to focus on nice, slow, controlled movement. If you're holding the dumbbell overhead, making sure that your, your back isn't opening up, you're keeping those ribs pulled down. Okay, so I got done with mine. You may be finishing up yours again, and we're gonna rest until the uh, next minute, so you get about a good minute rest or so. These can be, depending on if you're using a pretty heavy weight, these can be pretty hard in terms of breathing, especially if you're holding like kettlebell in the front rack. It's a really tough uh, position there. Or even holding it overhead, this is really good for developing a lot more strength in overhead squats, holding uh, any kind of presses, jerks, anything overhead. Uh, front rack is really great for core. Okay, so we're gonna go about 15 seconds. And it doesn't matter really what leg you start with. Um, sometimes I like to start with my weaker leg, just so it gets the, uh, you know, the work right up front, and then my stronger leg can, uh, can compensate and make up for that after. But again, it's really you know, up to you. It's up to your personal preference. You can switch it up. You know, we've got four rounds of this. You can start with the other leg if you want. Make sure you're really pressing that top foot firm into the surface that you're stepping into. And trying again, extending that top leg before the other leg meets the box as best as you can. So that you're really getting the, uh, the full work of this uh, unilateral movement here. to go. Weather's getting pretty hot here, so that's where we're taking a nice little rest break. Again, these are not for time. You're not trying to really rush really fast through these. Um, you're taking them slow, controlled, kind of like one second up, one second down. So we're really building that strength, you know, on either side. This is really good for also noticing your asymmetries. One side stronger than another, for example. So this next one, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a front rack. And you may find with the front rack that <laughs> your shoulder gets really tired, and that's that's totally fine. That's the kind of the one unique feature of having a uh, front rack. A kettlebell in the front rack is a little bit different than a dumbbell, being that the weight of it is a little bit more forward. So you ha really have to breathe a little bit better, and you have to stabilize a lot more with your midline with that weight, a little bit more forward balance than a dumbbell. Pressing right through that heel, right through the whole foot to elevate yourself straight up. Not necessarily forward, but think about going upwards more so. Alright. I know for me the 
front rack definitely is a lot harder to breathe. I got a lot more out of breath on that one. All right, we got one more round to go, and then we'll take a minute or so. We'll actually do a next video for this short part two of Under Fire, and I'll go over the movements in that video, as well as do the workout. And this workout here, we're gonna have a 10 minute time cap. I don't think it'll take you 10 minutes. If it does, it's, we're probably just dealing with other things, <laughs> like a crazy child or something. So we're just supposed to go pretty quickly. All right, we got our last round of the step ups. Again, I'm gonna do front rack. You can, again, it's your choice over how your front rack. Last side here, then just as controlled. Take your time. Find your balance with each step. Again, think about pressing the foot into the box or into whatever you're stepping onto to go straight up instead of forward. video for part two of the under fire workout.